at uh, Job chapter 19. And um, we're going through and we're dealing with, with, with Job and his uh, suffering and his uh, uh, ordeal that he's going through. And the reckoning that is trying to be made by his three friends. His three friends seem to think they have a, uh, an idea or, uh, or, or a, uh, a causality as to why Job is dealing with what he's dealing with. And, and the bottom line is so much highfalutin and, and sophisticated words that they use. But the bottom line is they say, Job, you're dealing with some hidden sin. You're dealing with some hypocrisy. You must be doing something. And Job's retort consistently has been, I have not been deceitful. I have not been hypocritic, hypocritical. I have not been that way. I may not be perfect, but I'm not dealing in iniquity. And so that's been Job's, you know, comeback for each time. And so what we're going to see now is Job again. After Bildad basically told Job, listen, Job, I know the way of the world. You know, you know, that, you know that old song by Earth, Wind, and Fire? That's the way of the world. Remember that? Well, that's what Bildad tried to say. I know how the world works. You do something and you're going to get this. You know, I, I understand how the laws of the, of the land are. And Job, based on what you've done, uh, uh, based on what you got, rather, you've done something, whether you want to admit it or not. And that's what Bildad basically is telling Job. Now, this is a this is a a very familiar song. We've been hearing this from these guys, you know, chapter after chapter, and now we're going to hear Job's retort to Bildad. But then, what Job's going to do? What you notice what Job has been doing lately is he's been talking about Bildad, but he's been on the side Bildad and Zophar and and Eliphaz, but on the side he's been slipping in things about who? About God. So, so he's like, you know, what's up with, so Job is starting to say, what's up with God here? You know, obviously God knows, and, and, and keeping in mind, all of these guys believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Although, based on the time frame of this, you know, Isaac and Jacob may not have been born yet, but you know, he is, Job is a follower. So that's always important to keep in mind as we go through each chapter. Uh, to build upon and to go. When you hear these people say these folks, these these folks are not heathenistic. They 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 are seekers of God. All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, let's get our uh, first portion here uh, reading in. Let me share with you the volume so you can hear it. Share and let's take a listen. Job nineteen. Chapter 19. Then Job answered and said, How long will ye vex my soul and break me in pieces with words? These ten times have ye reproached me. Ye are not ashamed that ye make yourselves strange to me. And be it indeed that I have erred, mine error remaineth with myself. If indeed ye will magnify yourselves against me and plead against me my reproach, know now that God hath overthrown me and hath compassed me with his net. Behold, I cry out of wrong, but I am not heard. I cry aloud, but there is no judgment. He hath fenced up my way that I cannot pass, and he hath set darkness in my paths. He hath stripped me of my glory and taken the crown from my head. He hath destroyed me on every side, and I am gone. And mine hope hath he removed like a tree. He hath also kindled his wrath against me, and he counteth me unto him as one of his enemies. His troops come together, and raise up their way against me, and encamp round about my tabernacle. He hath put my brethren far from me, and mine acquaintance are verily estranged from me. My kinsfolk have failed, and my familiar friends have forgotten me. They that dwell in mine house and my maids count me for a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. I called my servant, and he gave me no answer. I entreated him with my mouth. My breath is strange to my wife, though I entreated for the children's sake of mine own body. Yea, young children despised me, 
I arose and they strake against me. All my inward friends abhorred me, and they whom I loved are turned against me. My bone cleaveth to my skin and to my flesh, and I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Have pity upon me. Have pity upon me, O ye, my friends, for the hand of God hath touched me. Why do ye persecute me as God, and are not satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. That they were graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. But ye should say, why persecute we him, seeing the root of the matter is found in me? Be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath bringeth the punishments of the sword, that ye may know there is a judgment. Ch all right. So. Hallelujah. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. He may have sound like he's praying, bro. I'm telling you, man. He's. Sound he's, like he's trying to get to God, bro. He is. He is. He. You know. You, yeah. he, we we read this, and sometimes we 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 can be guilty of just going through this like a story. But this is reality. Uh, we look at the Word of God as factual. We see this as historic, as well as inspired. Um, and so Job is talking about real things. And what's interesting is, um, you know, how it is translated to us, be it whatever version of the Bible, whatever language, the Spirit of God is what gives us the insight. And so the Spirit of God captures the emotion of Job. Real emotion, real hurt, real pain, and trying to convey that. Um, and like you said, I mean, how many, all, how many times do we conversate and, and talk to people and then the emotion swells up and then we're now trying to talk and fight back tears and the equivalent quivering voices and because our, our, we feel hurt we feel misunderstood we feel uh, broken and Job talks about all of that here uh, and so this is why I, I, go ahead I listened to this you know when you were when you were playing it I'm listening to it and I saw myself in some of the things. And when you come to God like that, He will answer you. He will speak to you. I, I, I'm telling you, when you when you give up and you just go and tell it like it is, God will answer you. You know, you don't have to get with all all oh, gracious, wise God, eternal God. You know, when you come to Him and just plead like this. Yep. It moves the heart of God. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that is absolutely true, and um, we know God is paying attention because God is the one that what that started this. God said in the beginning that I'm gonna let this happen to him, and uh, and, and and the the charge that was said is the devil said, oh yeah, well if you let me do this. I'll make him curse you to your face. Now that's what the devil accused God that Job would do. Well, uh, Job is hurting. But as you can see, if we go through this, you know, Job is saying, I'm going to see God. I mean, regardless as to what I'm going through, that's the one thing I can hold on to. But um, it's, it's, it's difficult um, to rejoice in God when uh, uh, in, in in the natural when the body's on fire you thank God and you know that well I know what I know I know I'm going to be with the Lord but when you're in pain you still going to say ouch <laughs> Amen. you still going to drop some tears when you're in pain that that doesn't change the reaction of the body is the same you know I, you can trust God all you want but if you get cut you're going to bleed you know, and so that's the aspect. And so he's he, he's been cut not just from a bodily standpoint, but he's been cut emotionally. So he's going to bleed out. And what 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 kind of blood does an emotional wound uh, yield? It yields the, the you know the the anguish of the wailing of the the the, uh, the cry, the you know the the heart 
uh, showing forth its sorrow, all of that comes out of a, a, an emotional wound. And so look at what Job starts off here. And he says, uh, it says, then Job answered, and he's, and he's answering who? Bildad. Who had, uh, you know, this is the way the world works, answer for Job. And, uh, and Bildad, and Job says to him, then Job answered and said, how long will ye vex my soul? In other words, you, you've given me pain. And he's saying, see, Job's body's already hurt. He's already in, in, in physical pain. But what he's telling Bill that is, you're now vexing or hurting my soul. I mean, you're not giving me any physical comfort, not to say that you could. But you definitely are not giving me any emotional or spiritual or mental comfort at all. You're wearing me down with all of your words emotion, emotionally and mentally and spiritually. You're vexing me. So he says, how, how long will ye vex my soul? And break me in pieces with words. Not with just punches. Not with slaps. With words. Alright? Remember when we was a kid, we used to say, Sticks and stones will break your bones. But words will never hurt you. Well, we've come to realize that for a vast majority of people, words do hurt them. Uh, and, and to a certain degree, it can hurt anybody. Uh, if you don't handle and, 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 and parse it properly, uh, words can do some damage. And so what Job is saying is, you know, how long is this going to go on? All right? And uh, we got a couple more rounds to go. So I mean, to answer Job's question, is, is we still got a few more attacks that are going to come to him. And then we got another guy, a whole other person. Is going to be introduced to the to the conversation, and he's going to have his conversation, his part into it. So look at what verse three he says: "These ten times." Right? So he's looking. He said, "You know, look at all this. These multiple times have ye reproached me." So he's like, "It's not just once." So I, you, there's no way you're going to tell me what well, I did. It was an accident. I didn't mean what I said. See, if you if you turn around and slap me once in the face, you can go, "Oh, I didn't see you there." And you can say, my, my, I just so happened, I swung my hand. I didn't know you was there. But if you do it ten times, <laughs> no, you meant to slap me. There wasn't no accident. So what Job is saying is, that, you know, you have been, and, and you see how I've been saying, they've been so consistent in saying the same thing, basically using different ways of saying the same thing. So what Job is saying is, you did not mean to bring me any comfort. Because each time y'all talk, y'all brought accusation. So here it is. You, you, you're vexing my soul. Here it is. Ten times you have reproached me. You're doing it on purpose. You are not here to make me feel good. You're here to make me feel bad because you think I've done something wrong. That's, what you, that's, that's what's happening. And that's why uh, I, can, I can look at this and go... Here it is. Ten straight times, y'all said the same thing. So you must think this. See, if somebody tells you, you know, one time you're dumb, and then somebody else, and then they come back again, well, you're dumb. And it's like, well, after a while, you're going to be like, well, obviously you must think I'm dumb because you said it not once. One time you could have just been mad and just choose a bad word to call me. But after you said it ten times, now I now think that's what you think of me. And that's what Job is saying here. So he says, uh, you, you, uh, in verse uh, 3 of chapter 19 of Job, it says, Now these ten times have you reproached me, ye are not ashamed that ye have made yourselves strange to me? So what he's saying is, you guys are acting like y'all don't know me. Are you not ashamed? You're talking about me as if you don't know me. You know who I am. You know, okay, granted, you know I'm not perfect, but you know I'm not what you guys are trying to accuse me of. You should know that about me. But you've kept going. And so look at verse 4. And uh, be uh, it indeed that I have erred. My error remains with me. So he said, now, he said, be it indeed. In other words, 
let's say that I did err. Let's say I did do something wrong. He says, he says, have my error remained within me? Am I continuing to do wrong? If I did do something wrong, is that something that I've continued to do? Am, am I still making the same mistake? That this is continuing? This is going on day after day after day after day? Show me what I'm doing. You've been here for how long? Have you seen the error? Have I acted in the way that you thought I should act? To earn this type of reproach? He goes on. Um, he, uh, he says, If indeed ye will uh, magnify yourself against me, uh, remember that you know that song by the Winans. They did magnify themselves against me. Remember that little verse. Here it is. If indeed you shall magnify yourself against me and plead against me my reproach. All right. So you are trying to escalate and to and to bring a greater attention to something that you believe I have done wrong. My reproach. You're trying to uh, examine it and bring great light to something that you are accusing me of that you cannot prove I've done. Iniquity. Transgression of, uh, hypo of hypocrisy. Verse 7. No, I'm sorry. Verse 6. Uh, know now that God have overthrown me and have compassed me with his net. Alright. So, here he is. Job again. He's bringing God into the picture here. Which he should do, to a certain degree. Because God does have rulership over what? All that we say and all that we do. So he's saying, okay, um, um, know now that God have overthrown me. So he's saying, whatever has happened, God allowed it to happen. Now that is probably one of the most accurate statements that he had, that, that, that he has said so far. Because that's what happened. God allowed Satan to attack Job and Job's substance. And he said, just don't kill him. Right? And so that's what's happening. God has, uh, has allowed Job to be overthrown. Verse 7. Behold, I cry uh, out of wrong, but I am heard not. I cry aloud, but there is no judgment. So, now what he's saying is, I cry, or I pray, or, and he's talking about, you know, him dealing with God. I'm coming, I'm coming to God with uh, crying out about my wrong. But look what he says, but I'm not heard. Wow. Can we feel like that sometimes? Like we go to God about a problem and it seems like God's not hearing us? God, do you hear what I'm saying? But, the, but now, from us looking at the story here, we know... God definitely hears. God was God knew what was going to happen to Job before it happened. God knew the attack of Satan was on its way. So of course God knows. God saw it before it happened. God allowed it to happen. But from our point of view, and that's the, the thing that we often do, we're always looking at things from our point of view. It's, it, it really is a, a, a life skill that will free you and me to, to, to nth degrees if we can start seeing things from God's point of view or for that matter, from just other points of view, other people to see things different than we do. Um, people that have different uh, uh, experiences gain other insight and can, and can show angles of how things are that we might not see. But how much and how great it is if we can see things from God's point of view to the point which we can be revealed of that. Because we don't know all of how God sees things. But what we do know is that from God's point of view, God knew what was going on with Job. And if God knows what's going on with Job, then God's, Job is in what? He's in God's hand. Man. Are you, did, you, did you, do you get that? What all the Job is going through, and you listen to all that he's about to complain about, we can still say, Job is in God's hand. Job is being watched over, 
even though to, from Job's point of view, it seems like he's not hearing me. All right? Uh, and he goes away, he says, I cry aloud, but there is no judgment. He feels like he's not getting any proper uh, 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 judgment. Uh, and there's two folds to that. Job's thinking that if I plead God, I should get a just response. The other aspect of that is, do we want judgment? Do we want to get what we deserve? All right? And from Job's standpoint, and, and even from ours, nobody, no human being wants, from a spiritual standpoint, what they deserve. Because uh, the wages of sin is what? Is death. And we all are born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So therefore, all that we uh, say and do without the workings of Jesus equates to death. And that's not what we want. We want so, grace and mercy. So it's, Job has the faith, but yes. it's like with me, it's like the healing is not coming fast enough. Exactly. <laughs> it's not. And, and, then, and then that's when you, that's when all the negativity sets in. Yes, it does. You, you want... But you, you pray, you get up and you pray, and like it was said, you just talk to God, and you, and you pour out your heart, and you expect tomorrow everything to be okay. Mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the same way. Exactly. You know, and like that's where I am. Like I talk to God every day. So I say, well, tomorrow when I wake up, I'm going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And it's not like that. That's right. Mm -hmm. No. And, and you are 100% you are right. Uh, that's exactly how uh, we are as human beings. That's exactly what Job is dealing with. And, and you can see the, the, uh, the connectivity here, that these are things that we as human beings go through. Right. And the fact that God wrote this in a book and allowed it to be recorded. As a matter of fact, I'm getting ahead of myself because Job was about to say, I wish somebody would write down what I'm going through so that I could have evidence uh, 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 going forth. Well, but let me not get ahead of myself. But uh, yes, you're absolutely right, Wayne, that uh, we do feel that way because we want the answer and we feel like he's not answering us and we're not getting the, the judgment or the, or the just response to our plea. See, we kind of feel like if I pray and I see God and I get on my hands and knees and I, and I cry and I, I expect God to answer. Well, it don't work that way. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> Say again, Mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so you, you, you expect that to happen, but it, it don't always work that way. So then what we got to do is learn to yield to who? God. To God. We learn to yield to him. And then we got to learn to become like David when he says, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will what? Fear no evil. Fear no evil. Right. All right. And so therefore, um, you know, and you say, well, what is the walking through the valley of the shadow of death? Well, in Job's case, it's like his body is wrapped up. His body is, is, is in a mess. Yes. <laughs> and, and yet he's got to be like, well, but one thing I do know, I'm following the shepherd. And the shepherd knows. So therefore, I'm going to fear no evil. For why? Because God is with me. And so that's the mindset that we have to learn to put on. And it ain't easy to do it every day. Because some days you just don't feel like putting that on. Some days you just feel like getting up and swinging and fighting and looking for somebody to attack. Because you want change. But it don't happen like that. It happens in God's way and in God's time. And, in, and so that's why I say if we can learn to put ourselves... In, in a mindset where we see things from God's perspective and not always from what we want because we want things to work the way we think they should work. All right? And we talked about that when, when we uh, were talking on Sunday when we went through that, you know, about Galatia. That sometimes you go, you're seeking and you're doing, trying to get to do what you want, to do what you can, but you never get what you want. Yeah, it, it all comes down to being patient, but... When you're hurting, you know, I mean, when you're hurting, the patience just seems to fly out the window. No, no, no. When, when, when you're hurting, you, you're going to cry. Right. 
Yeah, if you believe me, I know. And when you when you cut, you gonna bleed. Absolutely. You know, so therefore, there's nothing wrong with tears, and there's nothing wrong with the with the the blood dropping when you got a wound. But it's the trust, trust. Mm -hmm. leaning on the Lord. Yeah. The the mindset is not well. Just to add, it's not just the mindset of God. It's the mindset of a wor worshiper. Because the mindset of God belongs to God. He knows all and sees all and has the answer to all. We might not get that. We might never see all that. But if we have the mind of a wor worshiper, then we can wait mm -hmm. and be good like, in the way. You know, you can get caught with a knife and you see blood, you can put a band-aid on it. saying, wait up on those. No, with this That's knife, right, you bro. can't put a band-aid on it. Yes. Going through, a band-aid don't heal nothing. That's, that's right. right. That's right. That's no, right. And, and, you know, that, that's what I see. You know, I would be caught with a knife right now. At least I can put a band-aid on it. And a couple of days, I know the wounds are going to close up. Right. That's right. You know? But, I, I mean... I mean, I, I believe me, I understand, because, like I said, with this stroke and everything, it's like, <laughs> oh, you pray, you pray, you, you're actually begging. Right, right. You know, like Joe, he's he begging for some answers, he's begging for him, you know, you know, it, you know, then everybody's telling him, oh, you had to do something wrong, or you wouldn't be in this predicament. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's right. True. Yeah. You know? Now, if this had happened to me 30 years ago, I would say, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, I deserve this. You know? Right. That means for me to come through and battle back with all my addictions that I went through. You know, I say to me, man, everything I did, why me? Right. You know? Well, what it is is that, you see, we, we're, trying to, we're trying to put together a... A, a a logical answer. We're trying to put together right. uh, things that stack up. We're trying to make it fit like Legos. You know how they go. You know they're all different kinds of shapes, but they all kind of connect. Right. Well, the, the things with God don't always connect like that. They're not always smooth, snap together type of answers. God right. does things in realms that are way different than what we see, and so. It's a very uh, uh, old cliche, but it can't. There's nothing that can be more true that, that uh, God works in mysterious ways, and that whole concept means that God does things that we can't comprehend, no matter how hard we try. Right. And we, we can really pour out our heart. God, show me, to, and God will. You can't get this. Jesus even pointed it out about our lack of understanding. I don't know if you remember in the beginning of, I think it was Acts 1 or Acts 2, when after Jesus has rose from the grave, the disciples came to him and said, uh, uh, you know, uh, are you, is it now time for you to bring and set up the kingdom? And Jesus said, it is not now for you, it, it, you, it is not for you to know now. No. No. The time or the season. So there's certain things that you can't even receive. And then in another instance, he told them there are many things I have to tell you, but you are what? Not ready to receive them. So when you look at that from a standpoint of Jesus talking to his disciples, telling them things that they're not to know yet and that they're not ready to know yet, you know, and they walked with Jesus for, you know, for three and a half years. You know, think about us and, and our situation where we're trying to gain understanding and, and, and sincere. I really, really want to know. And we're seeking and we're digging. Him, but we're not at the point where it's time. For, we need a transformation in order for us to understand certain things. And that transformation can take place in our, in our mind and in our spirit and our attitude. Until the transformation takes place, you can't get it. Amen. So therefore, you know, like my cat, I can spend all day talking to my cat about all kinds of things, telling him about, you know, why, uh, you know, math equals, you know, two plus two equals this. But the cat's not going to understand it. Why? Because he's a cat. But if he gets transformed into an intelligent being, 
Then, okay, let me say, well, Wayne, that's ridiculous. Can cats don't turn into people? Well, I'm bringing the point up is that you have to have a, a nature change. Our nature can't understand the things of God. And you go, that cat's nature has to change. And that takes a miracle. It takes an almighty God. You say, well, yeah, I can't change the cat. But if God wanted to, he can. And you go, well, that don't make sense. Okay, well, then go read the story about, uh, what's his name? Uh, Balaam. When he had that conversation with the donkey. Right? So, so God brought that donkey to the point where he could conversate and explain to him if you, if you if I'd have kept going that angel over there would have chopped you in half but I stopped to stop the, the, the attack on you so I'm saying all that to get us to kind of grasp that yes we, we hurt like Job was hurt we go through pain like Job was going through and we want to know why what is it what did I do what and sometimes we need to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. Stop doing the what did I do or how could I done better? No, I or, don't deserve or, it. Or what did this ain't or I I don't deserve this kind of treatment or you know or I must be getting this because I was a bad kid or leave it alone, move on to what God is trying to do and just say, Lord, I'm gonna trust you this do day. It all. All right, so mm -hmm. I'm going to make it today doing what? Trusting you. I'll wake up tomorrow. If things are the same, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to trust you. Amen. And if things change tomorrow, am I going to stop trusting you? No, I'm still going to trust you even if things change. So the, what, what's the constant? Trust. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, then we go back to my, you know, what, what's been my foundational uh, scripture, you know, from, from, uh, from Romans, I mean, from Hebrews. Without what? Faith. It is what? Impossible to please God. So you you know, so that whole trusting in God, I can understand it. Well, that's why we have to use faith. You know, Penny talked about him must believe that must believe. Penny talked about help me out with the rest of that scripture. You 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 gave you gave us enough to understand. But, uh, you know, Peter talked about us worshiping, and that worshiping has to have that aspect of, I'm just going to have faith in God regardless. All right? Uh, no matter what comes, no matter what goes, I'm trusting God. He got it. And the confidence that he's going to make it work ultimately. And that's where we have to kind of uh, uh, lean towards. It's not always easy. All right? Because we want to sometimes just have things change. I want it the way, and, and then we want it to work the way we see it in our mind. But suppose God said is in the, in the heaven saying, have you considered my servant Wayne? Mm -hmm. Have you considered my servant Hayward? Have you considered my servant Leona? So let us not disappoint God. Yep. Yep. Let, us, let us stand and trust God and some, and that means we have to go through trusting God. Yeah. So. And um, I'm not. Scripture, we go back to after you done did all you can do. Just stand. 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 Amen. Yep. And um, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna, in a little bit. I'm gonna have us go to Revelation. We're gonna take a look at something here. But let's let's keep going. Let's keep watching and, and seeing the the pain and the suffering that Job describes. Look what he says. All right. So verse eight, he says. Uh, and he's talking about God now. He said, he has fenced up my way. So he's saying, God has blocked me in. And what does that mean? I can't go to anything that can bring me comfort. I try to go to the left, I get no comfort. I try to go to the right, no comfort. So I'm fenced in, man. I can't go up, I can't go down, I can't go forward, I can't go backwards. No matter which way I go, I'm going ouch, ouch, ouch. Pain, pain, pain. All right? So he feels like he's, he says, I'm fenced in. I'm fenced up my way. Then I cannot pass. He has set darkness in my path. So not only am I fenced in, I can't even see a way out. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. It's just, it's, it's dark. I, no matter which way I go, I feel pain and, and despair. And then when I try to just look for some hope, I see nothing. But darkness. No light at the end of the tunnel. No light at the end of the tunnel. Exactly. All right. He goes on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
Well, I'm sure we've been there in certain situations in mm -hmm. our lives. We've come to a conclusion, I can't see my way out of this. Right. But then at that moment, when you let go and let God, yep. then yeah. the path is clear. Yeah, and we all can say that. Those times when we yeah. thought, I could not, I, I don't see no way out of it, somehow or another. What? You got out of it, didn't you? You, you move forward. And it may not have been the way you wanted, but you, you're where you are now. Absolutely. Amen. Right. Right. Absolutely, that's what I feel. I mean, he brought me through so much, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, by the grace of God, that's the only reason I'm here, and, and I know that. Yes, yeah. You know, and I say to myself, you know, you brought me out of all this other stuff. It just took time, you know. Yeah. But all the time, you know, I knew I was doing wrong. You know, I kept saying, I'm going to do this one day, and, and I feel mm -hmm. better than the next day I do the same thing all over again. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, when it comes to this stroke, I'm trying to say to myself, what did I do this bad? Right. You well, know, it's something that, I don't know, like like Nick Penny said, I need to get out of my own way, but it's so hard. Right. Well, well uh, Wayne, one, one. You come through the big drug problem that I have. I know I have to get out of my own way. Yep, yep. You know, that's what 12 says. Thank God, you know. Yep. You know, came to believe in a power greater than ourselves. All right. Now, one thing we're going to have to do, Wayne, we got to, because you, you're saying some good things, Wayne, but uh, uh, me and Penny the only one that can really hear you really yeah, clear. I know. I and, know. And they, they, they are like, what is he? They're, they're looking and they got their head to the computer. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to somehow get you because if you can dial directly in, they'll be able to hear you just as good as we do. So we got to continue to work on that because you're saying some good things. I would like for them to be able to hear what you're saying. And um, uh, but we're gonna move along here. But but Wayne is just Wayne is you know y'all know how Wayne can go. He can he can say some stuff here, and he's been talking very well. But, but look at verse nine. Uh, he has stripped me of my glory. So, now this is Job speaking. All right, he stripped me of my glory. So, Job, once again, was a prominent person. He was the wealthiest man in the East. Stripped him of his glory. He was very well thought of, which is why, once again, he's looking at his friends. Back when he first started this conversation, he goes, you guys know me. And y'all accusing me of this? So, now he's, rever he, 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 he's reverberating back to that, stating that God has stripped me of my glory. The thing that people used to look at and say, isn't he a fine man? Isn't he a fine father? Isn't he a fine husband? Look at all the great attributes that he has. God has stripped that from him. And he's going to elaborate on that in just a bit. He stripped me of my glory and taken the crown from my head. All right, That crown gives him what? Authority. All of that that he had God has taken, allowed it to be, well, why? Because God allowed Satan to take everything. And once again, we often think about, well, his health, his children, you know, but we forget about his good standing, his, the way people think about him. And so now they look at him with, you know, with very, you know, uh, 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 squinted thoughts and eyes of like, hmm, what's going on with you? What was you doing all this time, Job? And so now people are beginning to conversate about him. Nothing new. They talked and mocked about who? Jesus. Jesus. All right. Verse 10. He hath destroyed me on every side. All right. And, and who's the he again? That's God. He, he, he's talking about God. He has destroyed me on every side, and I am gone. And my hope, he has removed like a tree. So he connected that hope. He, he's saying hope that was very uh, akin to him saying that all he sees is darkness. I don't see no way out. I don't see no light. He has no hope. When you have nothing to believe in, you have no hope. That's a problem. That's when despair comes in. And that's what's happening here. He, verse 11. He have also kindled his wrath against me. So what he's saying is God has attacked me out of anger. Now, we don't, we, we, we don't see that. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says that God allowed this to happen because God was very um, uh, proud and, 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 and giving accolades to Job. 
So his, his thinking, once again, he's thinking about how people act, how we act. You know, we, we give people we don't really care about the short end of the stick. People that we really like and, and, and respect, we give them, you know, the benefit of the doubt. And so what, God, what Job is saying here is, God ain't caring about me. God, God allowed me to be destroyed on every side. I don't have any hope. He, he kindled his anger against me. And counteth me unto him as one of his enemies. Wow. So Job feels now that his life is at a point where it seems as though God is treating him like an enemy. What Job is basically saying is a lot of what he's been, his friends have accused him of. I wouldn't be going through this if God saw me as a friend. Well, that's not true, Job. Because God does see you as a friend. He saw you as one of the best people that ever walked the earth. And that's why he let it happen to you. That's the part that sometimes we can't get, under, we can't get a, 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 a grasp on. That's right. That God will allow something to happen to you because he sees you as doing well or see you as somebody that, that can handle it mm -hmm. and somebody that's strong. And you say, well, why would God do that to me? Well, why did God allow it to happen to Jesus? <laughs> you see? So look at the company that Job is in. No, I'm no. going through all this difficulty. I'm going through all, but for no reason. Yeah, just like Jesus, Jesus. did. Amen. Look at the company you're in. So now, if you know what Jesus means to the Father, then you know what you mean to the, to Father. the Father. Amen. Now, we have an advantage. But Job don't see all this. No. That's, that's, why that's, I was, that's exactly where I was going. We have an advantage. We know the life and the teachings of Jesus. This is still to come for Job. He hasn't had this. We, we, uh, we, we can see something that Job doesn't know, but we still act like Job. That's right. And we already know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, so we, we, we need Jesus more. <laughs> That's right. We got to apply it more, more and, apply, uh, and, and apply it daily. And in all the circumstances, in all situations, you got to stop, sit back, and yes, man, can we get our feelings uh, launched. It happens. Why? Because we are human beings. Can we harness that and seek God? Not seek God for the comfort, but seek God for the understanding that He knows. If I know God knows, then I'm good. If I can just Put that little piece together. I know God knows. And if I can just relax into that. But sometimes it's not always easy to relax in that because we want what we want. When you want what you want, you want it. And sometimes we got to stop wanting what we want and want God. More. Mm -hmm. All right? And that's the, a lot of times is the answer. Right. Verse 12. His troops come together and rise up their way against me. His troops. In other words, those that work for God. Well, in a sense, that's true. Because see, what we, what, what we think about is the Lord send the angels. Send your angel to just watch them. And, and for, in Job's case, God did send an angel. But he sent a fallen angel. <laughs> he sent Satan. He allowed Satan to go and work with angel, But then you say, well, my goodness, you think that God was going to send an angel is going to go to, to work, you know, for your benefit. What we don't keep in mind, what we sometimes can't keep in mind is this is for Job's benefit. And from a natural standpoint, somebody will say, oh, really? Prove it to me. Show me where he's doing well. He is sick. He's broke. He can't do things and people just despise him. Show me how that's good. It's what God thinks of you. Not what man thinks of you. It's how God sees you, not how man sees you. And that's the key. And that's where our, our understanding that I'm doing good. How you say you're doing good, man? You, you, you are broken up. No, I'm doing good because God sees me as being his child, willing to go through whatever I need to go through 
accepting, being able to be in the Gethsemane like Jesus was. Lord, I don't want to go through this. If there's any other way that, that I can maneuver through this, let it be. But nevertheless, what? Thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will. So, that means if I wake up tomorrow and things are just as bad, God is still good. What's that old saying? God is good all the time. Even on a bad day. Even on a bad day. Mm -hmm. That's right. So you can have a bad day. That don't make God not good. He's still good. All right. So he goes on. He talks about the troops that rise up against, uh, uh, against me uh, and encamped around about my tabernacle. So now, not only are the troops messing with me, but they mess with my house. See, Job, it ain't just Job's uh, body. His yeah. cattle, his, his wealth, his employees, all his servants. And all the time, we forget about that, you know, because what I'm also going to get to is he lost his what? His children. But he also lost his servants. A lot of his servants were put to death. When those uh, Sabaeans and, 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 and the, uh, the Midianites came and attacked, a lot of servants were put to death. And you, had, you, you heard that one servant came running, and I alone escaped just to be able to tell you. All right? So all of that he lost. Uh, but yet at the same time, uh, you know, the Lord... Giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed what? Be the name of the Lord. That's what Job's response was initially. So yes, his whole tabernacle, his whole dwelling, his whole household was affected. Verse 13. He hath put uh, my brethren far from me. So he's saying that people that used to be close to me are now, not, they, don't, they don't want to hang with me no more. And man, that, that's something, that, that, that's true right there. You got some people, man, when you start going through it, they, they are, yeah, they ain't coming by. They ain't calling you. They ain't saying hello. They, they ain't trying to look for you. They ain't, they ain't texting you or TikToking you or Zooming you or whatever the case may be. It don't happen. All right? That's my brother are far from me, and my uh, acquaintance are very estranged from me. Okay? So those that I, that I used to be around don't want to deal with me. Why? Well, but, you know, you don't look too good, man. Plus, you stink. You know, you don't smell good. You don't look good, you don't smell good, and you ain't acting good. And you're in a, you're in a bad mood. Of course, Job's in a bad mood. He's hurting all the time. All right? But then he goes on. My kinfolk. Okay, kinfolks will stick with you through thick and thin, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not so. All right? My kinfolks have failed. Look at that. And my family... No, I'm sorry, my, my familiar friends have forgotten me. All right? So my kinfolk, uh, that's the family, and my familiar friends, people that I, I'm used to seeing all the time, I don't see anymore. Verse 15. They that dwell in my house. Now, the people that live with me. All right? In my house. Uh, and, my maid, uh, and my maids count me as strangers. Alright, so the service that he had, the people that he was paying to work for him, now look at him as though what? You are, what how are you gonna tell me what to do? You know, I mean so the, the, the his own employees, his own household, the people that he had once were paying uh, salaries to are now looking at him strange. Alright. Um it says, I am an alien in their sight. Uh, they're not paying him no mind. Job saying, bring me a glass of water. They're like, get your own water. Can you come fix my wound? Fix your own wound. <coughs> you know, so he's not getting any respect from that standpoint. Um, he says, I, I, I called my servant and he gave me no answer. All right. I'm calling those that are supposed to come and serve me, and they don't even pay me any mind. I call them all day long, and they don't answer me. I, I entreat him with my mouth. All right, he's, he's calling them, and no, no response. Look at 17. My breath is strange to my wife. My, my wife is like, I don't know what that smell is, but I don't like it. <laughs> so even the wife is like, you know, my breath is strange to my wife. So he's like, 
my wife don't find anything what attractive about me. That's what he's saying. My wife has no reason to come around me. So I'm not getting any any brethren, no familiar friends, no acquaintances, no no kin folks, uh, the the servants and the maids. No nobody's coming around me. Let's keep going. Uh, though though I entreat for children's sake of my own body. So uh, he said, yea, the young children despise me. All right? So not even the children. Nobody's coming around Job with anything worthwhile. Goes on and says, uh, I, I arose and they spake against me. All right? So the ch you know how children like to tease and talk they talk about, ooh, look at your pointy shoes, or look at your way you, they tease you about every little thing. Well, look, that's what they're doing with Job. 19. All my inward friends abhor me. Alright, so he's still talking about what? People. People. Folks. This is how folks are treating me. All these different kinds of relationships, and none of these relationships are showing him any respect. And Job was like, why is this happening to me? Oh, let me see. Did this happen to anybody else? It happened to Jesus. Remember, G Jesus' own brothers didn't believe him. They told him, they said, you know, the festival is going on. If you, if you be, you know, the son of God, why don't you go down there and do some miracles? And Jesus says, it's not time for me to go down there. It, 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 Y'all go down. It ain't time for me to go yet. And so, you know, all of these situations where... You know, even in his hometown of Nazareth, they didn't accept him. In Capernaum, they didn't accept him. All right? All these different people that knew Jesus. Isn't this the son of the carpenter saying these things? Y'all should know. He was a good kid. Now he's a, now he's a, now he's the good king. And y'all don't accept him. All right? Um... <clears throat> He says, all my inward friends abused me, and they whom I loved turned against me. Wow. Does that sound like somebody we know? Jesus loves, and yet folks turn against him. 20. My bones cleave to my skin and my flesh, and I escape with the skin of my teeth. So he's like saying that I have massive uh, uh, situations physically. I got all kinds of, 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 of issues with my body. I'm losing weight. I'm losing the ability to have bodily function. My body is beginning to break down. All right. All right. And um, he's like, this is just, is, yeah, we can also recognize Jesus. He had all that strength. But when it came time to carrying the, the cross, he couldn't do it. He had to have somebody else carry it for him. Alright. Uh, verse 21. Have pity on me. Oh, look at this. Job is saying, have pity on me. Have pity on me, O oh, my friends. For the hand of God hath touched me. Now, that's a true statement, but not because of why Job said it. See, Job is saying... The hand of God has touched me, and this is the bad thing. No, the hand of God has touched you, Job, and this is a great thing. But he can't see it yet. See, he's at a, he's at a level where no matter what anybody says to, to Job, Job's not going to be able to see it. He's got to be transformed. He's got to be what? Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed how? By the renewing of your mind. He needs a transformation of his mind. And until that happens, until maturity kicks in spiritually, he's not going to see it. He's going to always operate at this level. Pain must mean something wrong with me and God. No. Pain is what brings us to God. If it wasn't for the suffering and the pain of Jesus, we wouldn't have relationship. When we, as we go through our study in Exodus, we're going to see all the pain that we put through those sacrificial animals is what keeps the connection to God uh, uh, alive. Suffering brings forth something of substance uh, when it's done properly, and God knows how to do it properly. Moving along. Um, why do ye persecute me as, as God? 
uh, and are not satisfied with my flesh. So he's saying, why do ye persecute me as God? Now, I mean, so you, you, you say to, to Job, you know, what, what is he trying to say here? I have to be honest. I'm not 100% sure what he's trying to say. He's, 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 he's saying you persecuted me as God. Does that, is, that, is that a reference? If we take that out, God, and who else is God? We know God the Father, but if we put, if we put the word Jesus, and that's what I've learned to do, when something don't seem to make sense, put Jesus in it, and then see what it sounds like. So let's read it like that. But that's what I do when I don't understand stuff. So it says, why persecute me as Jesus? Hmm, does that make any more sense? Do I get any enlightenment when I, when I, when I say that? Well, I get the, the understanding that, well, you're suffering. Go ahead, sir. Do you like the uh, New King James? Go ahead. Why do you persecute me as God does? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 because yeah, no. the, the the scripture before it it says uh he says have pity upon me have pity upon me O ye my friends for the hand of God had touched me mm. so why do you persecute me as God mm. so God has he's saying God has already has already, already done, done this to me he's already persecuted me and are not and are not satisfied with my flesh I think that's right. I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. That's that that makes sense. It yeah. does. Mm -hmm. But that uh, seems so when I don't know what something's saying, I'm I'm gonna be honest and tell you. And uh but I thank God that y'all two put it together. I think that's it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. Look at verse twenty three. Mm -hmm. Oh that my words were uh now written, oh that they were printed in a book. Now now we know that what he is wishing for is what is going to happen. So, you know, that whole thing of uh, them persecuting him as God, well, yes, God, uh, 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 God had uh, a, a, a test for him, and, they say, and he's saying, now you're doing it. And he says, I wish that somehow this could be all recorded in a book so people could be able to, well, that's why we're reading it. We're gleaning stuff from it. We're, we're pulling from it now. Why? Because it was written. And who did it? God. How? By the Spirit of God. By the Spirit. That's right. right. And then he goes on with that same theme. That they were uh, graven, graven with an iron pen and uh, led in a rock forever. So he said, I wish this was put in something solid. With an iron pen in, in lead forever. So it could be read. Well the word of God. Uh, <laughs> what's going to pass away? Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word will what? Will never pass away. So this word of Job will not be. Uh, uh, diminished or decay. Alright. Um, look at verse 25. He says. And this is beautiful here. He says, for I know that my Redeemer liveth. Now, see, therein is why we know that God chose the right man. With all the hurt that he is going through, he then blurts out this. I know my Redeemer. Well, what's a Redeemer? Somebody that's going to renew me. I know my Redeemer liveth. So he's saying, God is not dead. And God is not dead towards me. Because sometimes people say, well, I believe in God, but God don't believe in me. <laughs> Some people say that to you, and that ain't true either. God does believe in you. He does look to you. He died for you. For the scripture uh, doesn't say, for God so loved the Christians that he sent his only begotten son. It doesn't say that, does it? It says, for God so loved the what? The world. So that's everybody. And we always got to remember that. He goes, I, he says, I know my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. So what he's saying is, there will be a last day. There will be a reckoning time. And we will have to deal with actions upon the earth. And God's going to be the one making the judgment, making the, making the, the reckoning. 
All right. Finishing up here. We're past our time. And, and though after my skin, worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Now, Job is saying something here. He's saying, listen to this. Towards the end, when my body has been destroyed and decayed and been eaten up and, and got worms and maggots in it, I know that yet in my flesh I'm going to see God. So what Job is doing here is prophesying. He, the Spirit of God is speaking through his pain and he's saying something that he probably himself doesn't really truly understand. Sometimes we can do that. Sometimes, you know, I mean, I'll be the first to tell you to some things I read through here. I don't, I don't think I understand. But then I'll, I'll just, you know, kind of say what I think I know. And somebody's, like, ooh, that was, and I'm like, I have no idea what you got out of that because I don't know what I'm saying. I don't get it myself. I truly don't understand it. But for some reason, the words that were said help an individual. I, you, you get that from a lot of different people. You know I mean, I just sit here and listen to, to, to Haywood and Penny just a few minutes ago. And I'm thinking, well, I don't get this here. And y'all said something. I'm like, oh, well, you know what? I think that's it right there. So it's, it's beautiful when you can see this. And so what Job is saying, um, he's saying something that is, you know, remarkably uh, uh, accurate. Prophetic. You know, it's very prophetic. He's going to definitely see this happen. All right. Um, so he's saying, in my flesh I shall see God. 27, whom I shall see for myself. Wait a minute, if you're dead and eaten up by worms, you're going to see him yourself? Yeah, because you're going to see him how? In your new body. And my eyes shall behold and not another. So it's not somebody telling me about God. I'm going to see him what? For myself. Job, Job is speaking highly prophetic here. But see, this comes out of pain. Mm. You know, in the spirit. In the spirit. Mm. He's got all this, this ratchet that's going on in his body. And he's just speaking. And the spirit of God has begun to take over. And speak for him. And speak in him. And speak through him. He goes, uh, though the rains be consumed within me. But ye shall say, why persecute we him? Seeing the root uh, of the matter is found in me. All right. So, you know, you're going to say, well, why, why do we persecute him? You know, seeing that the, the, the core of the, of the, of the problem is, uh, is found in me. And so you, you, you look at that and you go, well, it's, Sounds like he's just saying, you know, I'm being persecuted because in me is the problem. That's where the root of it is. That's where the, the foundation of it is. Well, that's true of everybody. What's the root of all of our problems? Evil. Sin. Sin. Yeah. All right. So, yes, the root of the problem is in me. That's, that's a very true and prophetic statement, too. Uh, and, and that's why we say I want God's mercy I don't want to get what I deserve because if the root of all problems are part of what makes up me being born in sin, shaped in iniquity I deserve to die I deserve persecution and somebody will say well did Job deserve this? From a, is Job a sinner? yes so everybody deserves this alright but Job was one that was brought would God just allow all the mercy and protection, the hedge to be removed, and Satan to just to come on in? All right, um, but God is still uh, uh, watching over because God said you can't do one thing, and that's you can't kill him, because God's got something else He's going to do. So it's going to be a, a restoration of Job that's very akin to the resurrection of Jesus. Not the same, shadowing a type. Like it, not the same. Our final verse. Be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath bringeth the punishment of the, of the sword, that ye may know uh, there is a judgment. Alright, so his very end says, we do need to be afraid of what? The sword. What is the sword? Uh, the sword is something that can cut and it can slice, 
But what do we know the sword as being? The word. The word of God. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, uh, and and that word of God is something that is sharp as as any two-edged sword. Uh, when we when the Lord Jesus spoke, he as though he, as though there were what swords coming out of his mouth. His word is um, it, it goes piercing. It goes with the ability to cut between the very soul and spirit, the bone and the marrow. The word can do that. And so and then it can bring forth proper and correct judgment. Where we can't bring proper and correct judgment. We think we know how to how to judge and we're trying to be fair. We're trying to bring forth proper judgment. But oftentimes we we we, we lean yeah. towards mm -hmm. you know one way or another and we make mistakes. Um, because we're just human and we, we have our prejudice, we have our hang ups, we got our tendencies that we lean towards. Uh, but the word of God brings forth proper judgment. All right, we're going to stop there. I was going to take a quick trip into Revelation. I might do that next week. Uh, well, well, excuse me, uh, Wayne, I need you to pray for me before we close. Okay, we're going to do that, sir. All right. Uh, that was Wayne on the phone, and he says he wants prayer for himself specifically before uh, when we close, and we're going to do that. Anybody else has anything else that they would like to add? All right, with that being all, we're going to go ahead and ask all the bow their head. Father, we come to you once again in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We come, Lord, thanking you for your goodness, and we praise you, we thank you, O God, for your word. Lord, we thank you for this story, for Lord, for this life of Job that we have uh, had the blessing and the opportunity to read and to go through. We're asking, O oh God, that you would just give us complete understanding and insight and the ability to just, O oh God, gain the instruction and the, and the wisdom through this. Now, Lord, we ask, O oh God, to look upon our brother Wayne, Lord. We know that he has been going through, Lord, you have brought him so far. And, Lord, you have just given him, O oh God, a touch of your goodness and you, O oh God, touched him his mind and his soul and his spirit. And Lord, yes. even as he's going through now in his body, Lord, Lord, we're just looking, oh God, that you will just continuously let him know that you are with him and that it is for a purpose and that you are working in him. Um, yes. And it may not be the way uh, we think it should go, Lord, but you are going to do it the way it's supposed to happen. And we yes. just want to trust you for that. Now, Lord, in all that you do, Lord, give us that assurance, that comfort, that peace, oh God. Help us, oh God, to have the ability to rest in you as we go through and we struggle day by day. Lord, we praise you, we watch you, Lord, and as we uh, continue to uh, seek your word, we ask, oh God, that you will watch over us and give us the wisdom, oh God, each and every day. We just praise you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. We want to thank you again for uh, joining us. And Lord willing, we'll, we'll see you again on Sunday as we go through uh, our Exodus study. All right. Y'all have a wonderful night now. Okay. Thanks, everyone. All right. Yeah. Wayne, be encouraged. Don't be sad. Yes, ma'am. All right. Be encouraged in Jesus. Yes, ma'am. He got you. I know. All right. All right. Thanks. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. I think he appreciates that. Mm -hmm. I was tired today. I was. Did, yeah. I, did you, could you tell? Yeah. That <laughs> was. Just considered like some some of like especially like in this book, you could lump some of uh, a group together and then just get down. Uh, and you then, when you say group to my group of verses. Yeah, because it's all similar. I know. And I was thinking and, about that, but I was like, because I was I was uh, I was I, you know at some point I may you know do that. <laughs>